Hi, I'm Dr. Matt, as you know, and we're here again today with the Stepping Stones Montessori students, fourth through sixth graders. Uh, today's special uh, person who is going to talk to us about anatomy and physiology is uh, Professor Paul Krieger from Grand Rapids Community College. Uh, Professor Krieger is rather famous throughout the country. He's written several books uh, on anatomy and physiology. I just want to show you a few of these here so that later on when you guys are going to college you can pick these up because I'm sure they'll still be running by then. Here's one. There are visual analogy guides to human anatomy so there's lots of things to do in here that will help you memorize uh, bones and muscles and whatever else you have to know. And there's a big one here which is sort of a combination of all these. So they're really nice. They're, they're written for college students and they're written with the visual learner in mind. So they're very, very good books. And they've been adopted at many universities and colleges throughout the country. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce you to Professor Krieger and you can take it away. Thank you, Matt. You guys can call me Mr. Paul. And uh, <laughs> if you look over on the board over here, we kind of have a schedule today. We're gonna do three different activities today and it's all gonna be based on the human body, okay? The very first one right over here on the board, as you can see, is energy from sugar. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Second thing is we're gonna do a few things on your brain, so we have a little section called the amazing brain and do some activities with that. Third one is build your own limb, meaning like arm and leg. We're gonna work with the skeletal systems. We have bones to put together and we'll be building our own arm and leg, doing a picture of it a little bit toward the end of the period, okay? So first thing I have to ask you guys is for the very first part for energy from sugar, we have a little demo up here at the front, okay? And what we're gonna do is, now you guys probably know, how many of you guys have had a gummy bear before and eaten that? Oh, okay, that's quite a few. Okay, now you guys know that your body needs energy and you also know that gummy bears is one thing that could give you energy, right? And so I basically have a little bag of these right over here. And so my first question is, what kind of nutrient is inside of these things? Who would like to read the label for me for this one? All you have to do is read, it says ingredients on the back of this, and you just read the first three ingredients. What does the first three things say after the word ingredients? Okay, so corn syrup, sugar, and high fructose corn syrup. Basically, that's like saying sugar, sugar, sugar. So these things are pretty much all a simple sugar, okay? So what we want to do is I have to do a little demonstration because you know what I think would be really neat? Wouldn't it be nice if we could actually see all the energy released from that gummy bear in front of us all at once? How many of you guys would like to see that? Oh, it's really good. So let me tell you, the first thing we have to do is take a look at what I have at the front of the room. I have a little demonstration, and you can see I have a test tube, and at the bottom of the test tube, there's a chemical, okay? Anybody want to know the name of it, or should I just skip past that part? Anybody curious? Oh, a few people are curious. It's called potassium chlorate, okay? So what we have to do for this chemical is we want this to give us oxygen, but you know what? It won't give us to it like that. If we just leave it like this, no oxygen. You know what we need to do? melt it okay so if you look over here see this little flame I have a little indication of what's gonna happen here's my chemical I need to liquefy it so how am I gonna do that well I came in prepared today so I have a little burner and to do that I have to light it up of course so I'm gonna go over here and get my handy dandy little flame um, lighter for my flame and then after I do that what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit more so I'm going to melt this, and as we're melting this, I'm going to have the flame going right now, and I'm going to melt that chemical, that potassium chlorate. What's it going to do? We're going to be good scientists today. Good scientists are always good observers. So what I'm going to have you guys watch for is this, and you can help me out. Keep your eye on that. Keep your eye on this, because you know what's going to happen when it turns to a liquid? We're going to see bubbles. And those bubbles are going to be coming out of solution and those bubbles are indication of a gas, and that gas is oxygen. And then we probably should draw our gummy bear in here, because you know what we're going to do? We're going to actually introduce our gummy bear into this. Who would like to choose one of these? To, okay, I'll let you do it. So you choose whatever is your favorite color. We got green ones, yellow ones, red ones. Whatever your favorite color, you just pick it out. doesn't matter, whatever it is. 
and then we'll use that one to go with, okay? So you kind of picked a nice yellow one. So we can see we got a nice yellow one over here today that we're going to use. So I'll set that to the side over here. So to kind of show what's going to happen, let's put our little gummy bear in here. Well, he's got a big belly and a head kind of like this, and then he's got some ears like that, stubby little arms, stubby little legs, and kind of looks like that, right? So that's the source of our sugar, according to what we just read. We have sugar, and you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a chemical reaction. And the chemical reaction is oxygen meeting sugar. And when those two th meet, things meet, they have a chemical reaction. And guess what? That's just like what happens in your body cells. But we got to check if our solution is melted. Is it melted yet? Oh, yeah, it's melted. Now, we got to double check. Do I see bubbles coming out of this? Could you tell me if you see any bubbles out of that? Do you see bubbles? Yeah. OK, we see bubbles. That's a good thing if we see bubbles. Now I'm going to heat it up just a little bit more. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to get ready to turn off the light. Because you know what I want you to do when I turn off the light? All eyes up front. All eyes on the bottom of the test tube. And we're going to see what happens when oxygen meets sugar. OK? So you guys ready? Yeah. You sure you're ready? Yeah. yeah. You're positive? Yeah. OK, all right. OK. Ready? If you could hit the lights, Dr. Matt, then we'll kind of see what happens when sugar meets oxygen. Here we go. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is something. It's still going. Now, we're going to be good observers, right? You can hit the lights again, Dr. Matt. Okay, we're going to be good observers when we look at this. Now, the first thing we're going to do is, you want to be careful because this is actually quite hot, okay? So I'm going to go over here, and all I want you to do is put your hand near it, but don't touch it, but put your hand near it. Can you feel any heat? Yeah, Can you feel yeah, any heat? Yeah. Right. I'll let you guys feel too. Can you feel any heat over here? Just don't touch. Like Can you feel? It smells like what? Marshmallows. Burnt marshmallows, right? Looks kind of charred like that. You know what? That's not much different than if you burn a hamburger on the grill. Have you ever seen that before? What does it look like? Does it look charred like that? You know what that is? That's an element called carbon, and we have that carbon inside of our sugar, so it's a charred gummy bear is what we basically have. Yeah? What, ha what happens? Well, what exactly happens in a gummy bear? Well, this is a really good question, because if you were going to study this in detail, this is a chemical reaction called an oxidation reaction. And what we did is we took the sugar, we chemically reacted it with oxygen, and we converted it into other products. Now, you know what? We got evidence of some of those other products. What did you see? What did you see? Um, you said it smelled like what? Burnt marshmallows, right? But what did you see coming off here? Smoke, right? You know what some of that smoke was? Water vapor. So part of that gummy bear turned into water vapor. You know what else can come off of here? Carbon dioxide. Some of it got converted into a gas and got turned into that, okay? So look at this. What we basically did is we have a charred gummy bear, okay? Now let me ask this question. What was our purpose of this? To, to observe energy being released from our sugar, right? So how did, where was the energy released? What evidence did we observe that had energy released from here? Who else wants to add? Somebody else? What do you think? There was a bright light. So in other words, energy was released in the form of what? Light. That's exactly right. Now what did you guys feel over here when I let you, what, what was that? It was also released as what? As heat. So energy was released in the form of heat. Energy was released in the form of light, right? And you ask what it got converted into, and we saw some of that in evidence with the smoke, right? And now we're smelling like burnt marshmallows in the room. So when you look at this one, do you think this would be a very good idea if when your cells use this fuel, they burn it like that in your body? Yeah. Why would that be bad? You'd light yourself on fire. You would light yourself on fire, exactly. I can't think of a better way to say it. You know what? Inside your body, you got all these trillions of cells, and you know what? they do this same chemical reaction. You know what the difference is? Anybody want to guess? Go ahead. They don't light themselves on fire? They don't light themselves on fire, but there's a reason why. Anybody want to guess why? What do you think? Their body takes the energy instead of turning it into heat? That's a very good answer. Do you know what happens? Instead of doing a real quick reaction, it's very slow, and your body ends up getting to use that energy 
well, what do you need that energy for? When you eat your gummy bear, you eat food, what kind of things does your body need it for? Yep. To um, just be able to maybe even work all day. Right, just to work all day. What are you doing when you're working all day? What's happening? Like with my legs right now as I'm walking around the room, what's happening inside there? Yep. Muscles are contracting. Boy, does that require a lot of energy, a whole bunch. Where are we getting that energy? From things like food, like the, the um, simple sugars that we just saw. Yep. Um, exactly. Think of all the things that have to work in your body. Your heart has to beat. Your lungs have to work. Your digestive system has to work. That's a lot of things that have to be working all the time. And all of it requires energy. So you know what we're going to do for this one? Um, I just wanted to show you as an example how we can see all the energy being released all at once. Now, we have a little treat for you, and Dr. Matt is the guy to dish it out. And just to kind of cement home this idea of we get energy from food, well, you can pick out a gummy bear. So he's going to come around and let you grab one. As so, long as you're, everybody's allowed to eat those, I have to double check with the teacher. If you're allowed to eat those, you can have a gummy bear. Today is a special that day. That the first little thing. So and then what we're going to do is, after you have a little snack, then we'll get ready to transition in the next little part. Um, about your brain, okay? So now they're going to be doing slow oxidation with these gummy bears rather than fast? <laughs> that's right. That will be a slow oxidation reaction, okay. Dr. Matt. Oh, Not that's good. Not a rapid oxidation. And you know yeah, what? I'm going to let you guys take a look inside of these tubes. See? That's what happened to our gummy bear. It got all charred. Do you see that? Here's some you things that got all charred inside there. Do you see that? Because you were asking what happened to it. Did you have another question? Sure. How Go ahead. Well, that is a really good question. I can give you a little example that would make a little more sense. You know, we talked about muscles that need for muscle contraction. As I'm just walking around the room right now, I'm moving muscles in my arms and my legs, right? And when I do that, you know what? It requires millions of <laughs> molecules of energy cave. just for a few seconds of activity. Holy cow, that is a lot, isn't it? So you guys take a look at this, you can see there's what happened to our gummy bear. It kind of got charred, okay? Kind of got charred, didn't it? Yeah. yeah, you can see that there. That was all that, that's all that's left. That's all that's left, just that charred thing, okay? Whoa. Now, okay? <laughs> okay, so are you guys ready for the next activity? Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. So the next activity is, what's number two on their list? What was the name of that one? It says, amazing brain for number two, right? I got a question for you. The question is, let's push this aside for a second and let's look at something else. Here's my question. You guys have a little beaker at your table, table right? This little glass thing is, is my beaker. They use that in chemistry and other science classes. And if you look at that for a moment, I have a challenge for you. Everybody take out, you got a little piece of pink paper at your table. Take one piece of pink paper, everybody put it right in front of you, okay? Everybody have that in front of them? Now here is my challenge to you, okay? You'll see in a second how this relates to the brain, but here's the challenge. If I told you, you can't tear that paper, but you know what you gotta do? Fit it in here. How are you gonna do it? What do you think? Put it into a ball. That is a great idea. Let's do it. Everybody crumple that up, put it into a ball, and see, we'll see if it'll fit inside there. Does it fit? Yeah. Okay, everybody hold up their beaker to show that it fits. Okay, it's fitting pretty nice. Now, you know why I did this? Anybody have a guess why I did this? What it has to do, what does this have to do with a brain, for heaven's sake? Because we can reason out. What's that? We can reason out things. Yep, you can reason things, that's right, but why do we do this demo? I'll show you why. Look at this. This is a little plastic model of a skull. Well, you guys know where your brain is. Where would I find the brain in this thing? Yep. Inside the skull. Inside the skull cap, right over here. So, you know what we should do? Let's open this thing up and look inside and, and see what we have, okay? We're gonna take the skull cap up. Well, that's not a brain. What in the world is that? Oh my gosh. Well, this guy doesn't have a brain in here. What, well, what does this look like? A towel or maybe what? It's a pillowcase. Well, guess what? If I were to actually look at, I'll have Dr. Matt grab a real brain for this one. And you know, 
we both really need our thinking caps on for this. So if Dr. Matt, if you would be so kind to kind of, you know, participate by, you know, putting on your cap, that would be really helpful. Could you do that, please? I can do that. And if you were to look at one of those brains, if you could just hand me one of those, Dr. Matt, I would like to show people what we're trying to show them here. Now, this brain here is an example of a model of a brain. And this is like one that would fit inside of this skull, right? That's like a, a real brain that would fit inside there. Well, you know what? Take your paper now out of your beaker. You know what your paper is? That pink piece of paper is like? It's like your brain, OK? Now, unwrap it again and unwrap it out. And let's see how big that thing was. Oh, it's about a normal size sheet of paper. Well, guess what? If I were to unfold all the little curves inside of this brain, guess how about how big it is? About as big as a pillowcase. That is pretty darn big, right? But what did you guys do? You folded up your piece of paper, just like I can fold up my pillowcase, and guess what? Boom, fits inside the brain. We call that increasing the surface area. If you want to fit more in a smaller space, just like what you guys know what to do, you crumple it up and you put it inside there, right? Well, guess what happened to our brain? We crumple it up and we fit it in a small space. Why do we need to put such a big thing? Why do we need to put such a big space inside there? Why can't we just make it smaller? Yeah, what do you think? Store a lot of knowledge. You can store <laughs> a lot of knowledge. Anybody know the name of the <coughs> kind of cells that you have in your brain? Anybody heard of that before? Starts with the N. What do you think? Neurons. Neurons. Well, you know what? Anybody just want to guess how many neurons you have in your brain? Just take a look. Take a guess. 10, Maybe 10,000? More. What do you think? A couple trillion? Not really a couple trillion. We took a big leap from a couple thousand here over here. What did you say? A couple thousand? 10,000 to a trillion. That's a big jump, right? Actually, you have hundreds of billions of neurons in the brain. And you know what? That's why we need all that space, and that's why we crumple it up to put it inside your skull. Doesn't that make sense? Okay, now, I want to teach you guys a few parts of the brain, so here's what we're going to do. Over at your table, here's what you're going to see. You're going to see your own little cartoon picture of the brain. Everybody grab one of those little sheets, and you know what we're going to do? We're going to color code and label. You have a little jar at your table that has colored pencils at it like this. What we're going to do is we're going to color code the three main parts of the brain, okay? So, let's see. Let's want to do the biggest one first. Let's do the biggest one first. The biggest part of your brain, I'll show it to you on the picture, and then you can take a, um, a color marker out and do it. See this part on the top right over here? See where my finger's pointing? This real big region on the top, just that part? That's the biggest part of your brain, and it's called the cerebrum. Now, I'm going to have you guys color that whole area and color it one color. I'll show you where you stop, right over here. And Dr. Matt can come around and kind of show you where you stop. We'll have him go up like this, Dr. Matt. I'll just have him leave a little area right here, and all that's going to be cerebrum. So you can go double check. And then what we're going to do is all of this, you're going to color in all of this. One color. One color for just that part, OK? That's right. That whole area up here. That whole area up there, that's right. So you guys color that whole area right here, OK? Everything in here, that's one color. And here you go. Everything in here is one color. And that part's called your cerebrum. And as you color it, we're going to be talking about what that does, OK? That's exactly right, that whole area here. That's exactly right, that whole area there. You double check them, Dr. Matt, and make sure they're coloring the right part. And then I'm going to write that part on the board for us, OK? This biggest part of your brain, which holds all these neurons or nerve cells, is called your cerebrum. So we're going to write it up here. OK? So we wrote the name of that part of the brain up here on the board. It's called cerebrum. And that is the part of the brain where you do your thinking, and you do your problem solving. And you do things like planning out what you're going to do maybe on a summer trip. All of those thought processes are happening up there in that part of the brain. Okay? So that is the part that is called the cerebrum. Okay? You guys are doing a nice coloring job. Notice how big that thing is. Isn't it big? 
That cerebrum is very big, isn't it? Because thinking is hard work, and you guys know that from all of the different activities you do in school. Okay, now let's do another part, okay? After you get done coloring that, there's a part right below it that's right over here. Let me show you where it is. See this little part right over here in the back? See that? The part that's right below the cerebrum in the back. See that part? I'm going to have you guys do something to demonstrate this, okay? Why doesn't everybody take a moment to just stand up out of their chair? And then what I want you to do is this. See if you can do it. Are you guys pretty good at balancing? Try to do this. Try to copy me. Balance on one leg. On your left. Okay. Flip and go to the other leg. We've done a lot of balancing with that, haven't we? Can you stand on your toes and balance? And then can you stand on your heels and balance like that? And then can you do a funny pose on one leg like this? I'm falling over. OK. You know what? Part of your brain has to coordinate all those muscle movements, like balance and stuff. That part that we're going to color next. And you know what it's called? Cerebellum. So let's put that one up there. So here's the next one, cerebellum. So you, that part was very, very active right now, the cerebellum, when you guys were standing on one leg. So why don't you color that one next? There's my cerebellum, OK? That's looking good. Yeah, you can do a different one than that one. That's good. Very nice. Yep, that's the right place. They're doing it in exactly the right spot, aren't they, Dr. Matt? Really looks good. That's pretty nice. Good. So what part does that leave us with, everybody? That leaves us with the part right over here. Excuse me, I'm just going to borrow your sheet for a moment. That leaves us with this part right over here. See that? And that part is kind of the last place to color in. And you know what the name of that part is? Shall I put the name on the board before you color it? Let's do that. The name for this one is your brain stem. Okay. Your brain stem. Okay. So what I'll have you do for the last part is to color code that. And as you're color coding that one, we'll talk about what it does in just a second. Okay. So choose maybe a different color. So we have three different colors for each one. So um, let's do the brain stem a different color. Okay. Brain stem's a little different color. Now, think about this, everybody. Your heart's beating right now, right? Your lungs and your breathing. Do you have to think when you breathe? Do you have to think to make yourself breathe? Nah, it happens automatically, right? Think of all the stuff that happens automatically in your body. You breathe automatically. Your heart beats automatically. Somebody tell me something else that you do automatically. What else? Yep. Digestion. Digestion, perfect. You know, you... You digest the food and it moves through your, your digestive tract, like your small intestines. That's a lot of muscle movement, but you don't have to think about that, right? Well, guess what the rule is? The last part of that you colored called the brain stem, everything that's on automatic pilot that you don't have to think about, your heart working, your respiration or breathing, or your digestive functions, all those are controlled by that part of the brain. See? So different big regions control different things, OK? So there's one last little thing that Dr. Matt's going to help us with after you get done color coding. And that's that he's going to pull out a little cart. And I thought it would be kind of nice, you know, we have these little brain models to look at. But I thought it would be kind of nice if we got something that was a little more, oh, you know, fun. So he's going to go pull that one out from the side. He has some other brains for us that we brought in. And we'll see what those are like in just a second. So he's got our cart for us. And hmm, what are these? Oh, This is a uh, delicacy. Oh, that, man. Uh, what are those, Dr. Matt? These look like. Let me see. Let's unveil them. Should we? got some saran wrap on them. And let's take a look at these. Oh, man. We'll <laughs> put that down here. Holy cow. And take a look at this. There's like, boy. Anybody, what do you think these are made out of? Anybody want to guess? Yeah? 
They are jello brains. That's exactly <laughs> right. Now we thought it would be kind of nice if, you know, now let's compare it to this one. If I look at the top of this brain model right here, this is just one of those big regions that you drew. Anybody want to guess what big region I'm drew, doing? Yeah, what do you think it is? It looks like the cerebrum, doesn't it? And it, look at all the folds in it that it has, OK? Oh, would any of you guys like to touch them, to feel it? OK, let's have you touch them if you want to feel it. It's kind of the jello, squishy brain. It's just jello, so there's nothing to worry about. It's not like it's something slimy. You don't have to touch it if you don't want to. I just thought people might like to touch the jello <laughs> brain. Water no. no? Jello cerebrum. Anybody want to touch it? And That's your jello cerebrum. How close to an actual brain is a jello brain? That, this one, this particular mold, is pretty darn close, to be perfectly honest. Now, people buy these molds, and they, you know, they use stuff like this for Halloween fun and things like that. But <laughs> this one is, it's not perfect, but it's pretty close to anatomically accurate, at least for showing me the two major hemispheres of the cerebrum. Anybody want to touch these? There you go. That's kind of nice, isn't it? So, again, it doesn't have all the anatomical detail, but just for general two parts, it's not too bad. Okay? Now, Paul, I brought a knife. And oh, did you really? Yeah, so. Well, that would be nice. Well, you mean we can cut these things off? Maybe we could. And well, that would, well, you think we should, or should we just skip that? <laughs> yeah, chop. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, that might be good. All right, well, why don't we You go ahead and. So, if you cut that brain open, let me show you what Matt's going to do. I have a model <laughs> like this. Okay. And here's my I'll cerebrum. What do you guys think this dark brown part is, according to your chart on the back here? What would that be? Yeah, why don't you answer? What do you think? What do you think? Cerebellum. Cerebellum is back here. Cerebrum is over here. See that part that looks white? What do you think that is? Yep. The brainstem. Yep, the brainstem. So you know what I can do? Matt, Matt's going to do this right now. If I really open it up and look inside, whoa, I can see a whole bunch of more parts, can I? Now, unfortunately, here's where my jello mold falls short. <laughs> but it is kind of nice to be able to cut it in half. When we do that in class, we call it a hemibrain. Have you guys ever dissected anything before? Have you? What kind of things have you dissected? Let's see. Who's, why don't you tell me what you dissected? Um, you can cut this one, too. Sure. Some kind, of some kind of parasite or something? OK, anybody else remember? Yeah. Shark. You just dissected a shark? Well, Dr. Matt does that in his classes, don't you, Dr. Matt? Yes, I do. <laughs> As a matter of fact, he does. <laughs> what other things? You've done frogs and sharks. Boy, that's pretty advanced stuff. What did you, what did you also know? Did you dissect? What's that? Beta fish. Wow, that's a lot. Lamprey. Lamprey. Oh, <laughs> man, you've done a bunch. Yeah. Right. Oh, well, you've done a lot of dissection. So you're used to cutting into things and seeing them in halves, right? Do you know what the name of this is? When we cut it in half, we call this a hemibrain, meaning hemi means like half, OK? And we can see all different things when we look inside here. I'm going to tell you a few other little fun facts about the brain. Um, have you guys ever heard of this word before? It's, a, it's an anatomy word. It's a science word. And it's called a ventricle. Have you ever heard of a ventricle before? Does anybody know what it, where, it might, like, where might I find a ventricle in the body? Very good. They're the chambers or the pouches in your heart that hold blood. But how many of you guys knew that we had those same kind of pouches inside my brain? You got ventricles in your brain, but you know what? They're not filled with blood. They're filled with something else. And they're filled with a little fluid called cerebrospinal fluid. So it's a different kind of fluid. But anyway, I can see a lot of other parts of the brain here. But what we wanted to do today was to just show you the major parts of the brain. And so I think we're pretty good with that. Now, if we were to look at that Jello model, why don't we have Dr. Matt go over there and just, you can pick up maybe a half of that brain and just show him that we can't see the same kind of details inside of that one that we do with this one. Oh, just go ahead and get your hands dirty. Yeah, if we look at it like that, can we see the same detail on that model? No, because it's just Jello. And can you see the details on the inside like you can with this one? No. So there's where the model falls pretty short, doesn't it, for the real thing? If we really wanted to learn all the brain parts, we'd have to go with something a lot more detailed like that. OK? All right. So far, so good? So far, so good. OK. Here's what we're going to do. The last part, or the last main activity we have today is to go over um, building your own limb. OK? And what we're going to do is we're going to look at 
our own arms and legs to start with, and then we have a whole bunch of other animals to compare them to. So here's what I'm going to do. I want to start up front here like this, and here's what I'll have you guys do. Set aside your pink paper and set aside your beaker. Put them up front in the middle of the table. Because what we want now is we want a clean sheet of paper, okay? Get out that last clean sheet of paper that you have in front of you. And for that one, here's what I want you to do. I want you to draw a line right down the middle of the paper like this. You can use your colored pencil. So grab whatever colored pencil you choose, grab a line right down the middle, and on one of the sides, we're going to look at the main bones that make up your arm. And on the other side, we're going to make up the main bones inside your leg. And I brought up some models up here up front to help us out. So, for example, if you look over here, let's see. Let's start with the arm first, okay? Kind of look at, there's kind of a pattern. These are all the bones in my arm. So, if I were to able to look at this, this kind of matches up how it would fit in my arm, right? And I can compare this to the skeleton that we have over here. We got a skeleton over at the front of the class. Everybody look at the back of the class. See the skeleton in the back of the class? In a little bit, what's going to happen is, after I show you this, we're going to do two things, and I'm going to explain it to you. We're going to draw a picture of some of these main bones, just a simple picture. We're going to put the names of them down, and then we're also going to compare it to some other organisms, like a cat, or maybe a bullfrog, or maybe a bird. Let's take a guess. Do you think if I look in those different animals, you think the bone pattern is going to be the same or different? How many people, now just hold your, keep your hands down for a sec. How many people, take your guess, it's going to be one vote. How many people think same? Raise your hand. Okay. How many people think different? So you're all saying it's going to be different when we look at those other animals. Well, we're going to find out in a minute. Okay, so pretty much Dr. Matt can make the recording. He's going to record the vote. Did you record the vote? So pretty much everybody said they're going to, it's going to be different. Okay? And we have parents over here as witnesses, right? So basically we know that's what's going to happen. So if you look at this, here's what we're going to do. We have a big bone at the top like this. So let's label that one first, okay? We got one bone at the top like that. So let's draw that one out just as a big shape like that. There's one big bone at the top, okay? And this big bone at the top, I'm going to let you guys go over and in a minute after we're done, just do that big shape like that. You can just do that on your paper. We're going to give a name to it and then I'm going to have you grab one where you can actually touch one and look at it yourself, okay? What's the name for this one? This one right over here is called your humerus. H-U-M-E-R-U-S. That's your humorous. It's not humorous like funny, so it's spelled differently than that, but the name of that one is your humorous. That's your bone that goes from your shoulder down to near where you're kind of where your elbow is. Okay? Now we got two other bones down here. Everybody see that? Two bones going down here. So we got one on this side. Let's draw that as a big rectangle shape. We're not worrying about getting the shape perfect. We're just drawing out the pattern. So we got one bone connecting to two bones, okay? See that? I got these two down here, okay? Now, I'll give you a trick for remembering this so you can identify in a minute, but let's just put the names down to start with. The first one is going to be called the radius, okay? And the other one over here is going to be called the ulna. Now, I'm going to show you how to, how to tell them apart, okay? So if Dr. Matt could bring me a radius and an ulna, then I can show him a little trick for remembering this one, okay? Radius and ulna, we're going to do a little trick, okay? If we have those two bones and look at this one, then if I go over here, hmm, let's take a look at this one. This one's called the radius. What does it look like at the top? Do you guys ever seen a hockey puck before? See the top of that kind of looks like a hockey puck, okay? So the top of that one's like a hockey puck. It's rounded, right? So you know the way we remember that one? Rounded radius. So you know what we do? We got letters for that one we're going to put up here. Oh, rounded radius. So we're going to put rounded radius. And to remember that one, let's do this. 
let's make a little mark on this one and say, oh, the top of that one is round like that. It's nice and rounded. The top of that one is like our hockey puck. So that's how we can tell that one, okay? So you can just make a little picture to show a round circle by that one because when you go to look at your own bone, you're going to look for that rounded part at the top, okay? Now you have another bone over there, and that bone looks like this. This one's called the ulna. Now look at that part right over here in your ulna. Everybody put your hand on your elbow, okay? Feel that elbow? Guess what? That's this thing right here. So this bone is my, part of my elbow? Yep, it is. Now, if you look inside there, see how it looks like this? Well, you know what that looks like to me? That looks like a U-shape. Doesn't that look like a U-shape? You know what else it looks like? Thank you, Dr. Matt. It looks like a wrench. Don't you think it looks kind of like a wrench? See that? So we're going to say this one has a U-shape in it. So let's draw that over here. Let's draw, oh, the ulna, I can tell that one because it's got a U-shape. And there's the part for it like that, OK? So it tells me what it is by the letter U. Isn't that nice? So we're going to put U over there for U-shaped ulna, just like this, OK? So there's my U-shaped ulna, OK? So that's how I can tell those two apart. Now, let's go over here and let's go to another one. Let's take a look at the leg. I brought a leg in so we can take a look at that, OK? And here's what we're going to do. Wow, that's a whole leg. How would this one fit in me? This would fit in me just like that. Look at that. Wow. And it matches up. Does it match up the skeleton? Let's see if it matches up the skeleton. We can always match it up. Does that look like a pretty good match, everybody? Yeah. Yep, it does. So anybody know the name of this one? It's your biggest long bone in the body, the longest long bone that we have. Yep. Very good. That's the femur. Isn't it big? If you did some dissection, you might have seen a similar bone in some of the organisms you did. Okay? So this is a femur. Okay? So let's put that as the name of our bone over here. Let's put it up there and write it out. So we got a bone up here like this. So we'll put that out like this and we'll say, oh, we got a big bone up there like that. And that's my femur. And what do we say was special about the femur? Oh, it's the longest. So when you take these bones and go look at them, if you look for the one that's the longest, that one is going to be your femur. That's how you can tell. Okay, that's going to be the longest. Now, isn't the pattern for the arm and leg kind of the same? Yeah. Why? Look at I got two bones down here, don't I? Now, you know what? One of them's really big and tough. Why doesn't everybody feel the front of your leg? Have you ever heard of somebody talk about your shin bone before? And you can feel that in your lower leg. It feels like a big, long, hard piece of bone. You know what that is? That's this right here. Okay? And you know what the name of that bone is, your shin bone? Tibia. Okay? And then we got a tinier one over here called the fibula. So let's label those. Okay? So as we look at this one, we're going to say, oh, we got one bone down here and then another bone next to it. So we have right over here, the, the first one is called the tibia. And the other one is called fibula. Tibia and fibula. You know how I remember these? There's a little trick. Oh, there's always a good little trick to remember this one. You know what this one is? Which one's bigger, the tibia or the fibula? Tibia. tibia, OK? So you know what we say? Oh, that one's tough, tough tibia. Notice the sound, T and T, tough tibia. You know what this one? This one's a lot more fragile, smaller. So what are we going to call it? Fragile fibula, okay? So here's how we remember that. You can write this down, too. You can say, oh, this is the tough tibia, and this one is the fragile fibula, okay? So just remember, tough tibia is the bigger one. So for these two, the tibia is going to be a little bit bigger. All right? Now, what I want you to do for this part is Dr. Matt's going to help us with this next part. We're going to actually practice touching these bones. And what I want you to do at your table is two things. I want you to, number one, see if you can find all these bones. He's just going to set them out at your, your table. He's not going to tell you what they are. He's just going to set them out at your table. So you won't know. Your job is to figure out which one is which based on the little tricks that I gave you, OK? And then what you're going to do is you're going to try to fit them together so they look just like this, like a puzzle. You're going to try to fit all these together and 
see if you can make your own. And then when you're all done, you can color in these little bones when you're done. That's the next part. So why don't you guys go ahead. I'm going to help Dr. Matt set some bones at your table. You can work together at pe with people at your table and help each other out. And you can actually see if you can make your own arm and make your own leg. Okay. So let's do that right now. We'll kind of go over and see if we can do those. See if you can make your own arm. Go ahead and discuss it at your table and see what's what. Did you have a question, honey? What's that? Are these real bones? Some of them are, yep. What do you think? Are you missing one? Hmm. I think they're not done passing them out yet. They still have a few more to give. We'll help you get them at your table. Now, you know what you guys got to do to check yourself? Look at the skeleton. Go up and look. At, you can go ahead and get out of your seat and go look at the skeleton. Compare it to this one. Compare it to this. Match them up and see what's what. Which one's rounded? Which one has see, the look, hook? This one goes on the little. Yep, see? Put it right on here. Now, if you guys want to go and match it, you can match it to your skeleton over here. Look it. You can come on over here and get up. Match it to this and match it to this. See what fits. You tell me what, where it goes. What did you think? I'll tell you if you're right. We only got to do one thing different. Let's go double check ourselves. See that rounded part that looks like the hockey puck? That's this. Does it go up or down? Come here. Let's take a look at the skeleton. Does it go up toward your elbow? So it goes up there. So put the rounded part toward the top and you got it. You guys are doing a great job. Now see, I'll show you just how it hooks in. Now, why don't you do this? See that big bump at the back? Put your hand on your elbow. There's your elbow right there. And that's on which one? The U-shaped ulna. Can you see that? So radius, ulna, what do we call this one on the top? Very good, you built your own arm. Isn't that cool? Do you got yours done? Let's go, we'll see if it's how it looks. Did you really? That is really good. There's your tough tibia, and what do we call that? Fragile fibula, right? Isn't that good? Oh, that's really good. Now, here's how you double check yourself. Come look at the skeleton and double check. Did you look at the arm? Mm -hmm. See how it fits in? So is that looking good? Good. Yep. Yep. See how it fits. Let's see how, how did you do for your puzzle? That is very good. That's very good. Yeah, it goes right. See the little notch for it right over there? It goes right over there. You can feel that because that's a part of your ankle on the other How side. How does this stay here when it's not connected to this? That's a good question. You know what we're not seeing? What we're not seeing is all the muscles and other structures around here that will cover it up. So we're just seeing the bones, but there's really a lot more to it than that, right? And you know because you know we got skin and muscles and other stuff too, right? Very good. You guys are really good. You could be engineers practically. I want to be one when I grow up. That's great. Now sit down here and why don't you color in your different bones different colors, tibia, fibula, so you can do those. Now you can color in your bones different colors, tibia, fibula. How's yours going? Can I take a look? Okay, why doesn't everybody have a seat? It looks like everyone's seated. We're in the very last part now. And um, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of someone, since we just labeled the arm and legs and built our own, has anybody ever heard of somebody who had to get a hip replacement surgery? Really? Why don't you, why don't you mention, you heard of that before? Okay. You know what they do in a hip replacement surgery? You can relate it to this big bone that you see. Everybody grab your femur at your table, your femur like this. Yep. Oh, yeah, I know. I took yours. So, yeah, that's fine. If you look at this, see this part at the top right over here, that big rounded part? That forms what we call a ball and socket joint. Where is that going? If I look at this skeleton, where is that going? Into the hip, isn't it, right? So if they do a hip replacement, guess what they do? They have to surgically go in here and look at They take the whole head off and they put something like that in there. Isn't that something? Yeah? My grandma had to have that happen. Did she have to have that? Two titanium hips. That is something. Boy, so they had to put a new artificial hip joint in there for that. And you know what? I have another little artificial part for you that I can show. 
If you go to the end of this, you might have also heard of somebody who gets artificial knee replacement, right? You heard of that before? I had to, my man had total knee replacement. Is that right? Total knee replacement? And you know what they do on that one? Everybody look at their femur. You see these curved parts on the back? They take those off and they put in a metal plate like that, like you were mentioning the titanium plate. They put in a big metal plate like that. That's what they do have to, for, to do for artificial knee joint replacement, okay? So here's what I'd like to do. What I'd like to do is um, I want to double check you guys on one thing. We took a vote earlier, and what was the vote? I said, I asked you a question, and the question was, are the bone patterns in your arm and leg the same or different from other animals? And you guys guess different, okay? Let's see if that's right. What's the pattern? The pattern in our arm is one bone connects to two. What's the pattern in the leg? One bone connects to two. Well, we got a model of a cat up here, a skeleton model. And if we look at this one, you guys tell me. I'm not going to tell you the answer. You look at the leg. Here's the leg. You ask this question. Do you got one bone connecting to two bones in the arm and one bone connecting to two bones in the leg? You look at it and tell me what you think. Okay? I'm just going to take it around. Yes. Uh-oh. So how many people want to change their vote now? Oh, okay. So it's looking different, isn't it? I mean, no, not different. That's what you voted. It's looking the same. So you know what? The general plan for a limb is the same if you're a cat, if you're a bullfrog, if you're a crocodile or an alligator, or if you're um, um, pretty much an vertebrate animal, an animal with a backbone. So you can see that in this. Another good thing to see it on is if I look over here. If I look over here, I can see different limbs of different animals. Look, we've got turtles frogs, cats, and birds, and what are you seeing? One bone connecting with two bones. So what does that tell me? I got a lot in common. My arms and legs got a lot in common with other animals, don't they? Yeah? But they are different sizes. Yeah, the sizes aren't exactly the same. And sometimes the, the shape or the purpose of them isn't exactly the same. You might be surprised by this one. You know what one most people are pretty surprised by? is, let me see where that one went, the, the bat. Let's see. Um, let's see. Is that over here? Oh, here it is. If we look right over here, you know what some people are surprised by? Did you know the wing of a bat is very much like an arm? And you know what? They use the same names. You mean there's a humerus, a radius, and an ulna? You know what's different about it, though? Those long parts on the end are like your, what would you guess? What do you think those things are in the wing? Yep. They're like fingers called phalanges. And guess what? If I were to look at this bat skeleton, the wing of it is an arm just like yours, but it's specialized for flight. Isn't that amazing? So we need to change our vote to being, it's pretty much the same. Okay. Now, let me do a little summary of what we did today. So we had three key things that we did, okay? We looked at number one, we saw we can get energy from sugar. Now, we said that that was a chemical reaction called the oxidation reaction. Was it a rapid one or a slow one that we saw? It was rapid, okay? Now, did that one, let's see, we saw the energy released in what forms again was it? Who can remind me? We saw what? Light. Light and heat, and we saw that and observed that, that all the energy was released in one big whoosh, wasn't it? Okay? So that was what we learned for the first one. Yes, we get energy from sugar. Okay? Secondly, with the amazing brain, we learned that if we unfolded our brain, <clears throat> how big uh, <clears throat> would it um, be again? Approximately the size of a uh, what? About the size of a pillowcase. Boy, that's huge, isn't it? But if we fold it up, just like you could crinkle up that paper, we could fit into a much tinier area, okay? And then what we did was we learned some of the parts of our brain. Let's see. Anybody remember what the purpose of your cerebrum is? Was for what? Yeah? Did you write it down on your notes on your paper? It was your thinking cap. Your thinking cap. That's where you do all your thinking. Anybody remember for cerebellum what that one did? Someone else? Yeah, for coordinating muscle movements. What did we do to demonstrate that? Stood on one foot, didn't we? And then what was the brain stem doing? Anybody remember that one? Yeah? All the things that you don't have to think about. All the things you don't have to think about. Like what would be one example, anybody? 
Yeah, go ahead. Like breathing, for example. That's controlled by that part of the brain, isn't it? And you guys already have that color coded on your chart. Then the last thing was we built our own limb. And let's see, we needed to change one little thing. We saw that we have the same pattern in the arm of the leg. One bone connects with two, one bone connects with two. Now, let me have everybody check their vote again. If you were to compare this to other animals, you think we got the same pattern or different? What is it? How many think same? Oh, okay. Well, we got to change both. Okay. All right. So um, that was what we wanted to share with you today about the human body. And I hope you guys had a nice time. It was certainly nice working with all of you today. So um, that pretty much concludes today's session. Mm -hmm. Well, can we give a big thank you to Professor Paul for his wonderful explanations of our body parts and everything? <laughs> And uh, Professor Paul, can I wear my thinking cap for the rest yes, of the day? Yes, you can wear it around as much as you want. Because I, I feel a lot smarter. If you want. <laughs> okay. I probably will do that. Okay, that's good. All right, thank you very much, and we'll see you guys in two weeks, I think, for okay. another for another Great. session. Thank you. Good.